YouTube is an American video sharing website headquartered in San Bruno, California. The service was created by three former PayPal employees, Chad Hurley, Steve Chen, and Jod Karim. In February 2005, Google bought the site in November 2006 for $1.65 billion. YouTube now operates as one of Google's subsidiaries. The site allows users to upload, view, rate, share, add to favorites, report, comment on videos and subscribe to other users. It uses Web, H264, MPEG-4 AVC, and Adobe Flash video technology to display a wide variety of user-generated and corporate media videos. Available content includes video clips, TV show clips, music videos, short and documentary films, audio recordings, movie trailers and other content such as video blogging, short original videos, and educational videos. Most of the content on YouTube has been uploaded by individuals, but media corporations including CBS, the BBC, Vivo, and Hulu offer some of their material via YouTube as part of the YouTube Partnership Program. Unregistered users can only watch videos on the site, while registered users are permitted to upload an unlimited number of videos and add comments to videos. Videos deemed potentially offensive are available only to registered users affirming themselves to be at least 18 years old. YouTube earns advertising revenue from Google AdSense, a program which targets ads according to site content and audience. The vast majority of its videos are free to view, but there are exceptions, including subscription-based premium channels, film rentals, as well as YouTube Red, a subscription service offering ad-free access to the website and access to exclusive content made in partnership with existing users. As of February 2017, there are more than 400 hours of content uploaded to YouTube each minute, and 1 billion hours of content is watched on YouTube every day. As of April 2017, the website is ranked as the second most popular site in the world by Alexa Internet, a web traffic analysis company. Equals equals company history equals equals. YouTube was founded by Chad Hurley, Steve Chen, and Jod Karim, who were all early employees of PayPal. Hurley had studied design at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and Chen and Karim studied computer science together at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. According to a story that has often been repeated in the media, Hurley and Chen developed the idea for YouTube during the early months of 2005, after they had experienced difficulty sharing videos that had been shot at a dinner party at Chen's apartment in San Francisco. Karim did not attend the party and denied that it had occurred, but Chen commented that the idea that YouTube was founded after a dinner party was probably very strengthened by marketing ideas around creating a story that was very digestible. Karim said the inspiration for YouTube first came from Janet Jackson's role in the 2004 Super Bowl incident, when her breast was exposed during her performance, and later from the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Karim could not easily find video clips of either event online, which led to the idea of a video sharing site. Hurley and Chen said that the original idea for YouTube was a video version of an online dating service, and had been influenced by the website Hot or Not. YouTube began as a venture capital-funded technology startup, primarily from an $11.5 million investment by Sequoia Capital between November 2005 and April 2006. YouTube's early headquarters were situated above a pizzeria and Japanese restaurant in San Mateo, California. The domain name www.youtube.com was activated on February 14, 2005, and the website was developed over the subsequent months. The first YouTube video, titled Me at the Zoo, shows co-founder Jod Karim at the San Diego Zoo. The video was uploaded on April 23, 2005, and can still be viewed on the site. YouTube offered the public a beta test of the site in May 2005. The first video to reach 1 million views was a Nike advertisement featuring Ronaldinho in November 2005. 2005. Following a $3.5 million investment from Sequoia Capital in November, the site launched officially on December 15, 2005, by which time the site was receiving 8 million views a day. The site grew rapidly, and in July 2006 the company announced that more than 65,000 new videos were being uploaded every day, and that the site was receiving 100 million video views per day. According to data published by market research company Comsca, YouTube is the dominant provider of online video in the United States with a market share of around 43 and more than 14 billion views of videos in May 2010. In May 2011, 48 hours of new videos were uploaded to the site every minute, which increased to 60 hours every minute in January 2012, 100 hours every minute in May 2013, 300 hours every minute in November 2014, and 400 hours every minute in February 2017. The site has 800 million unique users a month. It is estimated that in 2007 YouTube consumed as much bandwidth as the entire internet 
Internet in 2000, according to third-party web analytics providers, Alexa and SimilarWeb, YouTube is the second most visited website in the world. As of December 2016, SimilarWeb also lists YouTube as the top TV and video website globally, attracting more than 15 billion visitors per month. The choice of the name www.youtube.com led to problems for a similarly named website, www.youtube.com. The site's owner, Universal Tube and Roll Form Equipment, filed a lawsuit against YouTube in November 2006 after being regularly overloaded by people looking for YouTube. Universal Tube has since changed the name of its website to www.youtubeonline.com. In October 2006, Google Inc. announced that it had acquired YouTube for $1.65 billion in Google stock, and the deal was finalized on November 13, 2006. In March 2010, YouTube began free streaming of certain content, including 60 cricket matches of the Indian Premier League. According to YouTube, this was the first worldwide free online broadcast of a major sporting event. On March 31, 2010, the YouTube website launched a new design, with the aim of simplifying the interface and increasing the time users spend on the site. Google product manager Shiva Rajaraman commented, We really felt like we needed to step back and remove the clutter. In May 2010, YouTube videos were watched more than 2 billion times per day. This increased to 3 billion in May 2011, and 4 billion in January 2012. In February 2017, 1 billion hours of YouTube was watched every day. In October 2010, Hurley announced that he would be stepping down as chief executive officer of YouTube to take an advisory role, and that Salar Kamingar would take over as head of the company. In April 2011, James Zirn, a YouTube software engineer, revealed that 30 of videos accounted for 99 of views on the site. In November 2011, the Google Plus social networking site was integrated directly with YouTube and the Chrome web browser, allowing YouTube videos to be viewed from within the Google Plus interface. In December 2011, YouTube launched a new version of the site interface, with the video channels displayed in a central column on the home page, similar to the news feeds of social networking sites. At the same time, a new version of the YouTube YouTube logo was introduced with a darker shade of red, the first change in design since October 2006. In May 2013, YouTube launched a pilot program to begin offering some content providers the ability to charge 99 cents per month or more for certain channels, but the vast majority of its videos would remain free to view. In February 2015, YouTube released a secondary mobile app known as YouTube Kids. The app is designed to provide an experience optimized for children, and features a simplified user interface, curated select of channels featuring age-appropriate content, including existing channels and entertainment brands, and parental control features. Later on August 26, 2015, YouTube launched YouTube Gaming, a video gaming-oriented sub-site and app that is intended to compete with the Amazon.com-owned Twitch.tv. 2015 also saw the announcement of a premium YouTube service titled YouTube Red, which provides users with both ad-free content as well as the ability to download videos among other features. On August 10, 2015, Google announced that it was creating a new company, Alphabet, to act as the holding company for Google, with the change in financial reporting to begin in the fourth quarter of 2015. YouTube remains as a subsidiary of Google. In January 2016, YouTube expanded its headquarters in San Bruno by purchasing an office park for $215 million. The complex has 554,000 square feet of space and can house up to 2,800 employees. Equals equals features equals 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 video tech technology equals 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 playback previously viewing youtube videos on a personal computer required the adobe flash player plugin to be installed in the browser in january 2010 youtube launched an experimental version of the site that used the built-in multimedia capabilities of web browsers supporting the html5 standard this allowed videos to be viewed without requiring adobe flash player or any other plugin to be installed the youtube site had a page that allowed supported browsers to opt into the html5 trial only browsers that supported html L5 video using the H264 or web formats could play the videos, and not all videos on the site were available. On January 27, 2015, YouTube announced that HTML5 will be the default playback method on supported browsers. Supported browsers include Chrome, Safari 8, and Internet Explorer 11. YouTube experimented with dynamic adaptive streaming over HTTP, MPEG Dash, and adaptive bitrate HTTP based streaming solution optimizing the bitrate and quality for the available 
Global Network, YouTube uses Adobe Dynamic Streaming for Flash. Uploading. All YouTube users can upload videos up to 15 minutes each in duration. Users who have a good track record of complying with the site's community guidelines may be offered the ability to upload videos up to 12 hours in length, which requires verifying the account, normally through a mobile phone. When YouTube was launched in 2005, it was possible to upload long videos, but a 10-minute limit was introduced in March 2006 after YouTube found that the majority of videos exceeding this length were unauthorized uploads of television shows and films. The 10-minute limit was increased to 15 minutes in July 2010. If an up-to-date browser version is used, videos greater than 20 gigabytes can be uploaded. Videos captions are made using speech recognition technology when uploaded. Such captioning is usually not perfectly accurate, so YouTube provides several options for manually entering the captions for greater accuracy. YouTube accepts videos that are uploaded in most container formats, including AVI, MP4, MPEG PS, QuickTime file format and FLV. It supports web files and also 3GP, allowing videos to be uploaded from mobile phones. Videos with progressive scanning or interlaced scanning can be uploaded, but for the best video quality, YouTube suggests interlaced videos be deinterlaced before uploading. All the video formats on YouTube use progressive scanning. YouTube statistics shows that interlaced videos are still being uploaded to YouTube, and there is no sign of that actually dwindling. YouTube attributes this to uploading of made-for-TV content. Quality and formats. YouTube originally offered videos at only one quality level, displayed at a resolution of 320 times 240 pixels using the Sorensen Spark codec, a variant of H263, with mono MP3 audio. In June 2007, YouTube added an option to watch videos in 3GP format on mobile phones. In March 2008, a high quality mode was added, which increased the resolution to 480 times 360 pixels. In November 2008, 720p HD. HD support was added. At the time of the 720p launch, the YouTube player was changed from a 4 to 3 aspect ratio to a widescreen 16 to 9. With this new feature, YouTube began a switch over to H264, MPEG-4 AVC as its default video compression format. In November 2009, 1080p HD support was added. In July 2010, YouTube announced that it had launched a range of videos in 4K format, which allows a resolution of up to 4096 times 3072 pixels. In June 2015, support for 8K resolution was added, with the videos playing at 7680 times 4320 pixels. In November 2016, support for HDR video was added which can be encoded with hybrid log gamma HLG, or perceptual quantizer PQ. HDR video can be encoded with the REC 2020 color space. In June 2014, YouTube introduced videos playing at 60 frames per second, in order to reproduce video games with a frame rate comparable to high-end graphics cards. The videos play back at a resolution of 720p or higher. YouTube videos are available in a range of quality levels. The former names of standard quality, square, high quality, HQ, and high definition, HD, have been replaced by numerical values representing the vertical resolution of the video. The default video stream is encoded in the VP9 format with stereo opus audio. If VP9 web is not supported in the browser, device or the browser's user agent reports Windows XP, then H264, MPEG-4 AVC video with stereo AAC audio is used instead. 3D videos. In a video posted on July 21, 2009, YouTube software engineer Peter Bradshaw announced that YouTube users can now upload 3D videos. The videos can be viewed in several different ways, including the common anaglyph, cyan, red lens, method which utilizes glasses worn by the viewer to achieve the 3D effect. The YouTube Flash player can display stereoscopic content interleaved in rows, columns or a checkerboard pattern, side by side or anaglyph using a red, cyan, green, magenta or blue, yellow combination. In May 2011, an HTML5 version of the YouTube player began supporting side-by-side -side 3D footage that is compatible with NVIDIA 3D Vision 360 degrees videos. In January 2015, Google announced that 360 degrees videos would be natively supported on YouTube. On March 13, 2015, YouTube enabled 360 degrees videos which can be viewed from Google Cardboard, a virtual reality system. YouTube 360 can also be viewed from all other virtual reality headsets. Equals 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 user features equals 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 community. On September 13, 2016, YouTube launched a public beta of community, a social media-based feature that allows users to post text, images, Images, including GIFs, live videos and others in a separate community tab on their channel. At the time of release, Vlogbrothers, Lily Singh, The Game Theorists, Carmen, The Key of Awesome, The Clunes, 
Peter Hollins, Rosianna Hals Rojas, Sam Sui, Tread Banger and Vsauce 3 received the feature. Equals 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 content accessibility equals equals equals. YouTube offers users the ability to view its videos on web pages outside their website. Each YouTube video is accompanied by a piece of HTML that can be used to embed it on any page on the web. This functionality is often used to embed YouTube videos in social networking pages and blogs. Users wishing to post a video discussing, inspired by or related to another user's video are able to make a video response. On August 27, 2013, YouTube announced that it would remove video responses for being an underused feature. Embedding, rating, commenting and response posting can be disabled by the video owner. YouTube does not usually offer a download link for its videos, and intends for them to be viewed through its website interface. A small number of videos, such as the weekly addresses by President Barack Obama, can be downloaded as MP4 files. Numerous third-party websites, applications and browser plugins allow users to download YouTube videos. In February 2009, YouTube announced a test service, allowing some partners to offer video downloads for free or for a few paid through Google Checkout. In June 2012, Google sent cease and desist letters threatening legal action against several websites offering online download and conversion of YouTube videos. In response, Zamzar removed the ability to download YouTube videos from its site. The default settings when uploading a video to YouTube will retain a copyright on the video for the uploader, but since July 2012, it has been possible to select a Creative Commons license as the default, allowing other users to reuse and remix the material if it is free of copyright. Platforms. Most modern smartphones are capable of accessing YouTube videos, either within an application or through an optimized website. YouTube Mobile was launched in June 2007, using RTSP streaming for the video. Not all of YouTube's videos are available on the mobile version of the site. Since June 2007, YouTube's videos have been available for viewing on a range of Apple products. This required YouTube's content to be transcoded into Apple's preferred video standard, H264, a process that took several months. YouTube videos can be viewed on devices including Apple Apple TV, iPod Touch and the iPhone. In July 2010, the mobile version of the site was relaunched based on HTML5, avoiding the need to use Adobe Flash Player and optimized for use with touch screen controls. The mobile version is also available as an app for the Android platform. In September 2012, YouTube launched its first app for the iPhone, following the decision to drop YouTube as one of the preloaded apps in the iPhone 5 and iOS 6 operating system. According to Global Web Index, YouTube was used by 35 of smartphone users users between April and June 2013, making it the third most used app. A TiVo service update in July 2008 allowed the system to search and play YouTube videos. In January 2009, YouTube launched YouTube for TV, a version of the website tailored for set-top boxes and other TV-based media devices with web browsers, initially allowing its videos to be viewed on the PlayStation 3 and Wii video game consoles. In June 2009, YouTube XL was introduced, which has a simplified interface designed for viewing on a standard standard television screen. YouTube is also available as an app on Xbox Live. On November 15, 2012, Google launched an official app for the Wii, allowing users to watch YouTube videos from the Wii channel. An app is also available for Wii U and Nintendo 3DS, and videos can be viewed on the Wii U internet browser using HTML5. Google made YouTube available on the Roku Player on December 17, 2013, and, in October 2014, the Sony PlayStation 4. Equals 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 localization equals equals equals. On June 19, 2007, Google CEO Eric Schmidt was in Paris to launch the new localization system. The interface of the website is available with localized versions in 89 countries, one territory, Hong Kong, and a worldwide version. The YouTube interface suggests which local version should be chosen on the basis of the IP address of the user. In some cases, the message this video is not available in your country may appear because of copyright restrictions or inappropriate content. The interface of the YouTube website is available in 76 language versions, including Amharic, Albanian, Armenian, Bengali, Burmese, Khmer, Kyrgyz, Laotian, Mongolian, Persian and Uzbek, which do not have local channel versions. Access to YouTube was blocked in Turkey between 2008 and 2010, following controversy over the posting of videos deemed insulting to Mustafa Kemal Ataturk and some material offensive to Muslims. In October 2012, a local version of YouTube was launched in Turkey, with the domain youtube.com.tr. The local version is subject to the content regulations found in Turkish law. In March 2009, a dispute between YouTube and 
and the British Royalty Collection Agency PRS for music led to premium music videos being blocked for YouTube users in the United Kingdom. The removal of videos posted by the major record companies occurred after failure to reach agreement on a licensing deal. The dispute was resolved in September 2009. In April 2009, a similar dispute led to the removal of premium music videos for users in Germany. Equals 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 YouTube Red equals 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 YouTube Red is YouTube's premium subscription service. It offers advertising free streaming, access to exclusive content, background and offline video playback on mobile devices, and access to the Google Play Music All Access service. YouTube Red was originally announced on November 12, 2014, as Music Key, a subscription music streaming service, and was intended to integrate with and replace the existing Google Play Music All Access service. On October 28, 2015, the service was relaunched as YouTube Red, offering ad free streaming of all videos, as well as access to exclusive exclusive original content. As of November 2016, the service has 1.5 million subscribers, with a further million on a free trial basis. Equals 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 YouTube TV equals equals equals. On February 28, 2017, in a press announcement held at YouTube Space Los Angeles, YouTube announced the launch of YouTube TV, an over-the-top MVPD-style subscription service that would be available for $35 per month. Subscribers can also receive Showtime and Fox Soccer Plus as optional add-ons for an extra fee, and can access YouTube Red original content, YouTube TV does not include a YouTube Red subscription, equals equals social impact equals equals, both private individuals and large production companies have used YouTube to grow audiences, independent content creators have built grassroots followings numbering in the thousands at very little cost or effort, while mass retail and radio promotion proved problematic, concurrently, old media celebrities moved into the website at the invitation of a YouTube management that witnessed early content creators accruing substantial followings, and perceived audience sizes potentially larger than that attainable by television. YouTube channels launched by The Ellen DeGeneres Show and The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon became two of the most subscribed. In 2013 Forbes Catherine Thayer asserted that digital era artists' work must not only be of high quality, but must elicit reactions on the YouTube platform and social media. By early 2013 Billboard had announced that it was factoring YouTube streaming data into calculation of the Billboard Hot 100 and related genre charts. Anderson asserted that it's not far-fetched to say that online video will dramatically accelerate scientific advance, and that video contributors may be about to launch the biggest learning cycle in human history. In education, for example, the Khan Academy grew from YouTube video tutoring sessions for founder Salman Khan's cousin into what Forbes Michael Knower called the largest school in the world, with technology poised to disrupt how people learn. YouTube was awarded a 2008 George Foster Peabody Award, the website being described as a speaker's corner that both embodies and promotes democracy. The Washington Post reported that a disproportionate share of YouTube's most subscribed channels feature minorities, contrasting with mainstream television in which the stars are largely white. A Pew Research Center study reported the development of visual journalism, in which citizen eyewitnesses and established news organizations share in content creation. The study also concluded that YouTube was becoming an important platform by which people acquire news. Describing the Arab Spring, 2010, sociologist Phil Pen. Howard quoted an activist's succinct description that organizing the political unrest involved using Facebook to schedule the protests, Twitter to coordinate, and YouTube to tell the world. In 2012, more than a third of the U.S. Senate introduced a resolution condemning Joseph Coney 16 days after the Coney 2012 video was posted to YouTube, with resolution co-sponsor Senator Lindsey Graham remarking that the video will do more to lead to, Coney's, demise than all other action combined. In February 2014, U.S. President Obama held a meeting at the White House with leading YouTube content creators to not only promote awareness of Obamacare but more generally to develop ways for government to better connect with the YouTube generation. Whereas YouTube's inherent ability to allow presidents to directly connect with average citizens was noted, the YouTube content creator's new media savvy was perceived necessary to better cope with the website's distracting content and fickle audience. Some YouTube videos have themselves had a direct effect on world events, such as Innocence of Muslims, 2012 which spurred protests and related anti-American violence internationally. TED curator Chris Anderson described a phenomenon by which geographically distributed individuals in a certain field share their independently developed skills in YouTube videos, thus challenging others to improve their own skills, and spurring invention and evolution in that field. Journalist Virginia Heffernan stated in the New York Times that such videos have surprising implications for the dissemination of culture and even the future of classical music, the legion of extraordinary dancers and the YouTube 
Symphony Orchestra selected their membership based on individual video performances. The anti-bullying It Gets Better project expanded from a single YouTube video directed to discouraged or suicidal LGBT teens, that within two months drew video responses from hundreds including U.S. President Barack Obama, Vice President Biden, White House staff, and several cabinet secretaries. Similarly, in response to 15-year-old Amanda Todd's video My Story, Struggling, Bullying, Suicide, Self-Harm, legislative action was undertaken almost immediately after her suicide to study the prevalence of bullying and form a national anti-bullying strategy. Equals equals revenue equals equals. Google does not provide detailed figures for YouTube's running costs, and YouTube's revenues in 2007 were noted as not material in a regulatory filing. In June 2008, a Forbes magazine article projected the 2008 revenue at $200 million, noting progress in advertising sales. In January 2012, it was estimated that visitors to YouTube spent an average of 15 minutes a day on the site, in contrast to the four or five hours a day spent by a typical U.S. citizen watching television. In 2012, YouTube's revenue from its ads program was estimated at $3.7 billion. In 2013 it nearly doubled and estimated to hit $5.7 6 billion dollars according to eMarketer others estimated 4.7 billion the vast majority of videos on YouTube are free to view and supported by advertising in May 2013 YouTube introduced a trial scheme of 53 subscription channels with prices ranging from 99 cents to $6.99 a month the move was seen as an attempt to compete with other providers of online subscription services such as Netflix and Hulu equals 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 advertisement partnerships equals 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 YouTube entered into a marketing an advertising partnership with NBC in June 2006. In March 2007, it struck a deal with BBC for three channels with BBC content, one for news and two for entertainment. In November 2008, YouTube reached an agreement with MGM, Lionsgate Entertainment, and CBS, allowing the companies to post full-length films and television episodes on the site, accompanied by advertisements in a section for U.S. viewers called Shows. The move was intended to create competition with websites such as Hulu, which features material from NBC, Fox, and Disney. In November 2009, YouTube launched a version of shows available to UK viewers, offering around 4,000 full-length shows from more than 60 partners. In January 2010, YouTube introduced an online film rental service, which is available only to users in the US, Canada and the UK as of 2010. The service offers over 6,000 films. Equals 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 partnership with video creators equals equals equals. In May 2007, YouTube launched its partner program, a system based on AdSense which allows the uploader of the video to share the revenue produced by advertising on the site. YouTube typically takes 45% of the advertising revenue from videos in the partner program, with 55% going to the uploader. There are over a million members of the YouTube partner program. According to Tube Mogul, in 2013 a pre-roll advertisement on YouTube, one that is shown before the video starts, cost advertisers on average $7.60 per 1,000 views. Usually no more than half of eligible videos have a pre-roll advertisement, due to a lack of interested advertisers. Assuming pre-roll advertisements on half of videos, a YouTube partner would earn 0.5x $7.60 x 55 equals $2.09 per 1,000 views in 2013. Equals 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 revenue to copyright holders equals 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 much of youtube's revenue goes to the copyright holders of the videos in 2010 it was reported that nearly a third of the videos with advertisements were uploaded without permission of the copyright holders youtube gives an option for copyright holders to locate and remove their videos or to have them continue running for revenue in may 2013 nintendo began enforcing its copyright ownership and claiming the advertising revenue from video creators who posted screenshots of its games in february 2015 Nintendo agreed to share the revenue with the video creators. Equals equals community policy equals equals. YouTube has a set of community guidelines aimed to reduce abuse of the site's features. Generally prohibited material includes sexually explicit content, videos of animal abuse, shock videos, content uploaded without the copyright holder's consent, hate speech, spam, and predatory behavior. Despite the guidelines, YouTube has faced criticism from news sources for content in violation of these guidelines. Equals 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 copyrighted material equals 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 at the time of uploading a video youtube uses
users are shown a message asking them not to violate copyright laws. Despite this advice, there are still many unauthorized clips of copyrighted material on YouTube. YouTube does not view videos before they are posted online, and it is left to copyright holders to issue a DMCA takedown notice pursuant to the terms of the Online Copyright Infringement Liability Limitation Act. Any successful complaint about copyright infringement results in a YouTube copyright strike. Three successful complaints for copyright infringement against a user account will result in the account and all of its uploaded videos being deleted. Organizations including Viacom, Mediaset, and the English Premier League have filed lawsuits against YouTube claiming that it has done too little to prevent the uploading of copyrighted material. Viacom, demanding $1 billion in damages, said that it had found more than 150,000 unauthorized clips of its material on YouTube that had been viewed an astounding 1.5 billion times. YouTube responded by stating that it goes far beyond its legal obligations in assisting content owners to protect their works. During the same court battle, Viacom won a court ruling requiring YouTube to hand over 12 terabytes of data detailing the viewing habits of every user user who has watched videos on the site. The decision was criticized by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which called the court ruling a setback to privacy rights. In June 2010, Viacom's lawsuit against Google was rejected in a summary judgment, with U.S. Federal Judge Louis L. Stanton stating that Google was protected by provisions of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Viacom announced its intention to appeal the ruling. On April 5, 2012, the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit reinstated the case, allowing Viacom's lawsuit suit against Google to be heard in court again. On March 18, 2014, the lawsuit was settled after seven years with an undisclosed agreement. In August 2008, a U.S. court ruled in Lens v. Universal Music Corp. that copyright holders cannot order the removal of an online file without first determining whether the posting reflected fair use of the material. The case involved Stephanie Lenz from Galitzin. Pennsylvania, who had made a home video of her 13-month-old son dancing to Prince's song Let's Go Crazy, and posted the 29-second video on YouTube. In the case of Smith v. Summit Entertainment LLC, professional singer Matt Smith sued Summit Entertainment for the wrongful use of copyright takedown notices on YouTube. He asserted seven causes of action, and four were ruled in Smith's favor. In April 2012, a court in Hamburg ruled that YouTube could be held responsible for copyrighted material posted by its users. The performance rights organization Gemma argued that YouTube had not done enough to prevent the uploading of German copyrighted music. YouTube responded by stating, On November 1, 2016, the dispute with Gemma was resolved, with Google Content ID being used to allow advertisements to be added to videos with content protected by Gemma. In April 2013, it was reported that Universal Music Group and YouTube have a contractual agreement that prevents content blocked on YouTube by a request from UMG from being restored, even if the uploader of the video files a DMCA counter notice. When a dispute occurs, the uploader of the video has to contact UMG. YouTube's owner Google announced in November 2015 that they would help cover the legal cost in select cases where they believe fair use laws apply. Content ID. In June 2007, YouTube began trials of a system for automatic detection of uploaded videos that infringe copyright. Google CEO Eric Schmidt regarded this system as necessary for resolving lawsuits such as the one from Viacom, which alleged that YouTube profited from content that it did not have the right to distribute. The system, which became known as Content ID, creates an ID file for copyrighted audio and video material, and stores it in a database. When a video is uploaded, it is checked against the database, and flags the video as a copyright violation if a match is found. When this occurs, the content owner has the choice of blocking the video to make it unviewable, tracking the viewing statistics of the video, or adding advertisements to the video. YouTube describes Content ID as very accurate in finding uploads that look similar to reference files that are of sufficient length and quality to generate an effective ID file. Content ID accounts for over a third of the monetized views on YouTube. An independent test in 2009 uploaded multiple versions of the same song to YouTube, and concluded that while the system was surprisingly resilient in finding copyright violations in the audio tracks of videos, it was not infallible. The use of Content ID to remove material automatically has led to controversy in some cases, as the videos have not been checked by a human for fair use. If a YouTube user disagrees with a decision by Content ID, it is possible to fill in a form disputing the decision. YouTube has cited the effectiveness of Content ID as one of the reasons why the site's rules were modified in December 2010 to allow some users to upload videos of unlimited length. Equals 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 controversial content equals equals equals. YouTube has also faced criticism over the offensive content in some of its videos. The uploading of videos containing defamation, 
pornography, and material encouraging criminal conduct is forbidden by YouTube's community guidelines. YouTube relies on its users to flag the content of videos as inappropriate, and a YouTube employee will view a flagged video to determine whether it violates the site's guidelines. Controversial content has included material relating to Holocaust denial and the Hillsborough disaster, in which 96 football fans from Liverpool were crushed to death in 1989. In July 2008, the Culture and Media Committee of the House of Commons of the United Kingdom stated that it was unimpressed with YouTube's system for policing its videos, and argued that proactive review of content should be standard practice for sites hosting user-generated content. YouTube responded by stating, We have strict rules on what's allowed, and a system that enables anyone who sees inappropriate content to report it to our 24 7 review team and have it dealt with promptly. We educate our community on the rules and include a direct link from every YouTube page to make this process as easy as possible for our users. Given the volume of content content uploaded on our site, we think this is by far the most effective way to make sure that the tiny minority of videos that break the rules come down quickly. July 2008, in October 2010, U.S. Congressman Anthony Weiner urged YouTube to remove from its website videos of Imam Anwar al-Awlaki. YouTube pulled some of the videos in November 2010, stating they violated the site's guidelines. In December 2010, YouTube added the ability to flag videos for containing terrorism content. In September 2016, after introducing Introducing an enhanced notification system to inform users of these violations, YouTube's policies were criticized by prominent users, including Philip DeFranco and Vlog Brothers. DeFranco argued that not being able to earn advertising revenue on such videos was censorship by a different name. A YouTube spokesperson stated that while the policy itself was not new, the service had improved the notification and appeal process to ensure better communication to our creators. In March 2017, the government of the United Kingdom pulled its advertising campaigns from YouTube, after reports that its ads had appeared on videos containing extremism content, the government demanded assurances that its advertising would be delivered in a safe and appropriate way. The Guardian newspaper, as well as other major British and US brands, similarly suspended their advertising on YouTube in response to their advertising appearing near offensive content. Google stated that it had begun an extensive review of our advertising policies and have made a public commitment to put in place changes that give brands more control over where their ads appear. The video was retracted after it was found that the ads had actually been triggered by the use of copyrighted content in the video. On April 6, 2017, YouTube announced that in order to ensure revenue only flows to creators who are playing by the rules, it would change its practices to require that a channel undergo a policy compliance review, and have at least 10,000 lifetime views before they may join the partner program equals 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 user comments equals 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 most videos enable users to leave comments and these have attracted attention for the negative aspects of both their form and content in 2006 time praised web 2.0 for enabling community and collaboration on a scale never seen before and added that youtube harnesses the stupidity of crowds as well as its wisdom some of the comments on youtube make you weep for the future of humanity just for the spelling alone never mind the obscenity and the naked hatred. The Guardian in 2009 described users' comments on YouTube as, in September 2008, the Daily Telegraph commented that YouTube was notorious for some of the most confrontational and ill-formed comment exchanges on the internet, and reported on YouTube Comment Snob, a new piece of software that blocks rude and illiterate posts. The Huffington Post noted in April 2012 that finding comments on YouTube that appear offensive, stupid and crass to the vast majority of the people is hardly difficult. On November 6, 2013, Google implemented a comment system oriented on Google Plus that required all YouTube users to use a Google Plus account in order to comment on videos. The stated motivation for the change was giving creators more power to moderate and block comments, thereby addressing frequent criticisms of their quality and tone. The new system restored the ability to include URLs in comments, which had previously been removed due to problems with abuse. In response, YouTube co-founder Jod Karim posted the question why the fuck do I need a Google Plus account to comment on a video? On his YouTube channel to express his negative opinion of the change. The official YouTube announcement received 20,097 thumbs down votes and generated more than 32,000 comments in two days. In the same article, Melvin goes on to say, on July 27, 2015, 
Google announced in a blog post that it would be removing the requirement to sign up to a Google Plus account to post comments to YouTube. On November 3, 2016, YouTube announced a trial scheme which allows the creators of videos to decide whether to approve, hide or report the comments posted on videos based on an algorithm that detects potentially offensive comments. Equals 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 view counts equals equals equals. In December 2012, 2 billion views were removed from the view counts of Universal and Sony Music videos on YouTube prompting a claim by the Daily Dot that the views had been deleted due to a violation of the site's terms of service, which ban the use of automated processes to inflate view counts. This was disputed by Billboard, which said that the 2 billion views had been moved to Vivo, since the videos were no longer active on YouTube. On August 5, 2015, YouTube removed the feature which caused a video's view count to freeze at 301, later 301+, plus, until the actual count was verified to prevent view count fraud. YouTube view counts now update in real time. Equal equals censorship and filtering equals equals as of september 2012 countries with standing national bans on youtube include china iran and turkmenistan youtube is blocked for a variety of reasons including limiting public exposure to content that may ignite social or political unrest preventing criticism of a ruler government government officials religion or religious leaders violations of national laws including copyright and intellectual property protection laws violations of hate speech ethics or morality based laws and national security legislation preventing access to videos judged to be inappropriate for youth reducing distractions at work or school and reducing the amount of network bandwidth used in some countries youtube is completely blocked either through a long term standing ban or for more limited periods of time such as during periods of unrest the run-up to an election, or in response to upcoming political anniversaries. In other countries access to the website as a whole remains open, but access to specific videos is blocked. In cases where the entire site is banned due to one particular video, YouTube will often agree to remove or limit access to that video in order to restore service. Businesses, schools, government agencies, and other private institutions often block social media sites, including YouTube, due to bandwidth limitations and the site's potential for distraction. Several countries have blocked access to YouTube. Iran temporarily blocked access on December 3, 2006, to YouTube and several other sites, after declaring them as violating social and moral codes of conduct. The YouTube block came after a video was posted online that appeared to show an Iranian soap opera star having sex. The block was later lifted and then reinstated after Iran's 2009 presidential election. In 2012, Iran reblocked access, along with access to Google, after the controversial film Innocence of Muslims trailer was released on YouTube. Thailand blocked access between 2006 and 2007 due to offensive videos relating to King Bami Baladolya Day. Some Australian state education departments block YouTube citing an inability to determine what sort of video material might be accessed and there's no educational value to it and the content of the material on the site. China blocked access from October 15, 2007 to March 22, 2008, and again starting on March 24, 2009. Access remains blocked. Morocco blocked access in May 2007 possibly as a result of videos critical of Morocco's actions in Western Sahara. YouTube became accessible again on May 30, 2007, after Maroc Telecom officially announced that the denied access to the website was a mere technical glitch. Turkey blocked access between 2008 and 2010 after controversy over videos deemed insulting to Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. In November 2010, a video of the Turkish politician Deniz Bakel caused the site to be blocked again briefly, and the site was threatened with a new shutdown if it did not remove the video. During the two-and-a-half-year block of YouTube, the video-sharing website remained the eighth most accessed site in Turkey. In 2014, Turkey blocked the access for the second time, after a high-level intelligence leak. Pakistan blocked access on February 23, 2008, because of offensive material towards the Islamic faith, including display of the Danish cartoons of Muhammad. This led to a near-global blackout of the YouTube site for around two hours, as the Pakistani block was inadvertently transferred to other countries. On February 26, 2008, the ban was lifted after the website had removed the objectionable content from its servers at the request of the government. Many Pakistanis circumvented the three-day block by using virtual private networks software. In May 2010, following the Everybody Draw Muhammad Day, 
Pakistan again blocked access to YouTube, citing growing sacrilegious content. The ban was lifted on May 27, 2010, after the website removed the objectionable content from its servers at the request of the government. However, individual videos deemed offensive to Muslims posted on YouTube will continue to be blocked. Pakistan again placed a ban on YouTube in September 2012, after the site refused to remove the film Innocence of Muslims, with the ban still in operation as of September 2013. The ban was lifted in January 2016 after YouTube launched a Pakistan-specific version. Turkmenistan blocked access on December 25, 2009, for unknown reasons. Other websites, such as LiveJournal were also blocked. Libya blocked access on January 24, 2010, because of videos that featured demonstrations in the city of Benghazi by families of detainees who were killed in Abu Salim prison in 1996, and videos of family members of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi at parties. The blocking was criticized by Human Rights Watch. In November 2011, after the Libyan civil war, YouTube was once again allowed in Libya. Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Russia, and Sudan blocked access in September 2012 following controversy over a 14-minute trailer for the film Innocence of Muslims which had been posted on the site. In Libya and Egypt, the Innocence of Muslims trailer was blamed for violent protests in September 2012. YouTube stated that this video, which is widely available on the web, is clearly within our guidelines and so will stay on YouTube. However, Given the very difficult situation in Libya and Egypt we have temporarily restricted access in both countries. Equals 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 music key licensing equals equals equals. In May 2014, before YouTube subscription-based music key service was launched, the independent music trade organization Worldwide Independent Network alleged that YouTube was using non-negotiable contracts with independent labels that were undervalued in comparison to other streaming services, and that YouTube would block all music content from labels who do not reach a deal to be in included on the paid service. In a statement to the Financial Times in June 2014, Robert Kinsel confirmed that YouTube would block the content of labels who do not negotiate deals to be included in the paid service to ensure that all content on the platform is governed by its new contractual terms. Stating that 90 of labels had reached deals, he went on to say that while we wish that we had a 100 success rate, we understand that is not likely an achievable goal and therefore it is our responsibility to our users and the industry to launch the enhanced music experience. The Financial Times later reported that YouTube had reached an aggregate deal with Merlin Network, a trade group representing over 20,000 independent labels, for their inclusion in the service. However, YouTube itself has not confirmed the deal. Equals equals NSA Prism program equals equals. Following media reports about Prism, NSA's massive electronic surveillance program, in June 2013, several technology companies were identified as participants, including YouTube. According to leaks of said program, YouTube joined the Prism program in 2010 equals equals april fools equals equals youtube featured an april fools prank on the site on april 1st of every year from 2008 to 2016 in 2008 all the links to the videos on the main page were redirected to rick astley's music video never gonna give you up a prank known as rick rolling in 2009 when clicking on a video on the main page the whole page turned upside down youtube claimed that this was a new layout in 2010 youtube temporarily released a text tp mode which translated the color in the videos to random uppercase letters. YouTube claimed in a message that this was done in order to reduce bandwidth costs by $1 per second. In 2011, the site celebrated its 100th anniversary with a 1911 button and a range of sepia-toned silent, early 1900s-style films, including Flugelhorn Feline, a parody of Keyboard Cat. In 2012, clicking on the image of a DVD next to the site logo led to a video about the YouTube collection, a purported option to order every YouTube video for home delivery on DVD, video cassette, laserdisc, or Betamax tapes. The spoof promotional video touted the complete YouTube experience completely offline. In 2013, YouTube teamed up with satirical newspaper company The Onion to claim that the video sharing website was launched as a contest which had finally come to an end, and would announce a winner of the contest when the site went back up in 2023. A video of two presenters announcing the nominees streamed live for 12 hours. In 2014, YouTube announced that it was responsible for the creation of all viral video trends, and revealed previews of upcoming memes, such as clocking, 
Kissing Dad, and Glub Glub Water Dance. In 2015, YouTube added a music button to the video bar that played samples from Sandstorm by Darude. Additionally, when users searched for a song title, a message would appear saying Did you mean? Darude, Sandstorm by Darude. In 2016, YouTube announced Snoopavision Beta, telling their users that soon they would have the option to watch every video on the platform in 360 degree mode with Snoop Dogg. Equals equals see also equals equals CNN YouTube presidential debates. List of most viewed YouTube videos. List of YouTubers. Booktube. Aulet V. Viacom International Inc. Reply Girls. YouTube Awards. YouTube Instant. YouTube Live. YouTube Multi Channel Network. YouTube Symphony Orchestra. Viacom International Link V. YouTube, Inc. General. Alternative Media. Comparison of video hosting services. List of internet phenomena. List of video hosting services. Equals equals references equals 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 notes equals 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 further reading equals 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 external links equals equals official website mobile YouTube on Blogger Press Room YouTube YouTube Google Developers, Heron, Brady, Hamilton, Ted, Why Do YouTube Views Freeze at 301, Number File, Brady Heron, Dickey, Megan Rose, February 15, 2013, The 22 Key Turning Points in the History of YouTube, Business Insider, Axel Springer Say, Retrieved March 25, 2017, Are YouTubers Revolutionizing Entertainment, June 6, 2013, Video Produced for PBS by Offbook, Web Series, First YouTube Video Ever, 